Welcome to Professor Ludwig's Biophysics Lab. The purpose of this demonstration is the start of the procedure section. The purpose of this demonstration is to go over the basic scientific principles we use when we're doing this work. Fluids and gases, blood flow, fluid, uh, oxygen. Fluids and gases only move if there's a pressure difference. For example, the heart contracts, the pressure in the ventricles is high. So the blood flows out of the ventricle into the circulatory system because of the increased pressure of the heart. Same thing when the diaphragm contracts, it creates a vacuum in our lungs, and that's why the oxygen goes in. Gases and fluids move because there's a pressure difference. In the body, at the capillary level, the difference between the pressure of the capillaries and the pressure of the tissue surrounding the capillaries is only a few millimeters. So if there's any increase in the tissue pressure, that's going to, that's going to uh, compromise the flow of the blood, and therefore the flow of the gases as well. I'm going to demonstrate. Um, I'm going to demonstrate during this time different ways these gases are going to move, and different ways these fluids can move. If we have an area in the body, we have a pain in the body, or discomfort, or an injury in. The body and this might be due to a lack of, of oxygen which is an old massage therapy idea and this lack of oxygen is due to a lack of blood flow and this lack of blood flow may be due because the tissue pressure is too high now if the tissue pressure is too high from edema which is happens the goal of therapy is to decrease the pressure by removing the edema and there's three ways manual therapists car uh, three ways manual therapists massage uh, therapy uh, can do this. And all three ways have one thing in common. They increase the pressure. Even though in the area that the, uh, of concern the pressure is already too high because of edema, if the therapist actually increases the pressure to a greater degree, what's going to happen is this increased pressure is going to cause this fluid to move out. The key is, is the therapist has to sustain the pressure long enough to give the fluid time to egress, time to move out. There's basically three ways we increase pressure in the target spot. One is through compression, squeeze it. One is through torque force, where we twist it or we bend it. And the third way is through traction. Now, when we say traction, we quite often think of decompression or decreasing the pressure within, but this actually is not the case. Here's the first experiment. Okay, so we take a towel. I'm just going to dampen this towel now, make it wet, to demonstrate this procedure. Okay, so we have a damp towel here. Damp towel. So I'm going to apply traction to this towel. As I apply traction to the towel, you'll see, as I apply the traction, you'll see the water actually drips out. See the water coming out of there? Now, if during the traction, the pressure was decreasing in the, the, the uh, cells, if the pressure was decreasing in the area we're tractioning, the water would flow. If anything, water would go in. The only reason why the water goes out is because the pressure within this material as it's being tractioned is increased, and the increased pressure causes the fluid to move out. I've been fooled by this for a long time. I always thought that traction was decompression. I always thought the traction, the pressure was decreased. But it's not. It's the opposite. One of the reasons why I think that manual therapy has such good results with traction and muscle lengthening procedures is the fact that it's actually moving the edema out, which results in a lower pressure than before, and then blood flow is restored. One other point we want to make in Ludwig's lab here is when this edema, when, this, when we find an increased pressure in an area of injury, it's due to this increased edema quite often, but there's a reason why the edema goes there in the first place. And the reason why the edema goes in there in the first place is when these nerves and connective tissues are under stress, they produce these large proteoglycans. And these proteoglycans absorb water through a uh, electrohydrophilic effect and through osmosis as well. So the fluid comes in there and the pressure goes up because of this. 
<coughs> as the fluid moves in, if there's no place for the water to go, the pressure goes up. The thing is, in the extracellular matrix or in the space, when the proteins absorb the water, when they come together, they form a gel. So the, it's a proteoglycan gel. So in the extracellular matrix, <coughs> the fluid you see is in the gel form. And this proteoglycan gel uh, observes certain physical properties. And one of these physical properties is <coughs> prone to shear stress. Shear stress means, I'll demonstrate shear stress. <coughs> shear, shear thinning through shear stress. So I'm going to demonstrate shear thinning right now. Toothpaste is kind of a proteoglycan gel. I, does, nothing comes out, but if I squeeze it, you'll see the toothpaste comes out, but quite sluggishly. Very sluggishly. Here's another proteoglycan gel. Ketchup. This is more like the proteoglycan gel we have between our cells. Now again, it doesn't come out, but when we squeeze it, look at that, it comes out very loose. It's thin. The viscosity decreases as the shear stress takes place at the walls of the container. The same thing happens with the proteoglycan gels that we have in these areas of edema. If we increase the pressure there through compression, through a torque force, or through traction, Shear thinning takes place on the gel and it's easier for it to egress. That's the end of the first lecture from Dr. Ludwig's biophysics lab.